right. I'm going to show my ignorance. Who, who are you? <laughs> the Shiro. Shiro. I'm an alcoholic. No. <laughs> Hi, Shiro. <laughs> Wrong. Oh, I'm I'm, where are you from? Um, okay. I'm originally from um, from out in Saskatchewan, a little, little town in southeast Saskatchewan called uh, called Essendon. Um, been doing art for as long as I can remember. Uh, uh, I don't know. I, I always sort of used art as, as a method of de-stressing over uh, really, really, really rough patches of work and stuff. And, uh, eventually, I just turned it into the thing that I do all the time. So. Yay. <laughs> um, it's not really a whole lot else to tell. Just if you guys have any questions, fire away. <laughs> I'm always interested in, in schooling history. Like, what, what kind of schooling have you gone through? Um, most of my art stuff is self-taught. Um, you know, I didn't do a whole lot in terms of schooling. I did do a one-year university course. I got a bachelor's degree in uh, traditional art and animation. Um, From one year? One year. Um, it was a, a very, very rough course. It was uh, the uh, the art. I can't talk to save my life today. Um, it was the Art Institute in Toronto, okay. and they basically had what was considered a crash course. Uh, they covered the same amount of uh, same amount of material as a lot of the five year courses do in eleven months. Uh, it was a very, very rough course. There was there's five years bachelor's course. Yeah. I know it's always listed as three years, and then, like the course is like I wasn't able to take all of that many courses at all. Now it's a past ten years I'm working on it. Yeah, no, uh, the course I put in uh, Sheridan College, uh, it's about five years, and um, like I said, the uh, this school covered about the same amount of material in eleven months. Wow. Um, we started with about 300 students. By the end of the first of the three terms, we were down to 100 and only about 30 graduated. Wow. It was a very hard course. Um, um, I survived, <laughs> to say the least. Uh, but you need that. Yeah. Uh, it was really. But uh, you know, aside from that, like I said, most of my uh, most of my information is already uh, most of it's self-taught. Um, I was actually kind of surprised. I was actually teaching. My uh, computer science teacher, he was showing a lot of the students, like, this is a, this is a drawing tablet, and this is how you use the stylus, oh! and, and Photoshop, and meanwhile, I've already been doing this for X amount of years, so yeah. I just, like, literally started working on a picture, just as he's got to talk, and yeah. have the layers and everything else, and he, uh, he came in, he thought I actually imported the picture, and I'm like, no, I've just been kind of doing this as you've been working here, so he didn't fully believe me. So he put me at his desk and turned on, you know, the computer the and the projector to project behind me. Yeah. And continued teaching the lesson as I drew. Okay. And he called up me into the uh, into the hallway by one of the other uh, members of the faculty for uh, you know, a brief moment. He came back in about two or three minutes later, and again I was about the same point in the drawing we found the first time. And he's like, "Did he like open something up when I wasn't looking?" And the rest of the class is like, "No, we wish he'd fucking slow down so that we could actually see what he's doing." <laughs> <laughs> so that was kind of an interesting experience. But, uh, yeah, teachers don't like it. That's right. Well, again, he was he was more for the uh, for the computer programs and stuff. Uh, we had a, a number of teachers actually. Um, we had teachers who, who worked on like doing both films and stuff. We had my life drawing teacher actually did some time with both my life drawing teacher and my uh, what was it uh, storyboarding? Uh, no, it was like, I think it was like the frame by frame animation. The actual like, actual animation teacher. Uh, we both did kind of Disney, so you know, it's like the word jail. I, I know, right? <laughs> it, for, for, Disney. for what you know about yeah. Disney nowadays, it pretty much is. Um, basically, if you get into Disney, that's that's basically it. You're there for for life. <laughs> it is a life sentence. Yeah. Um, but no. Uh, on the whole, you know, we had we had a bunch of guys who were you know, some, some really solid teachers. 
it's just a lot of fun to, to, to do the courses and stuff. So, um, but no, aside from that, it was just kind of like I said, I, I used it as a, my drawing as a method to de-stress. And um, you know, like I said, I had a lot of shitty jobs, so I had a lot of practice. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds more pleasing. Uh, it, it worked. <laughs> in the end, it worked. Yeah. Okay, mediums. What mediums have you dabbled in? Um, I think the plural is media. They're both acceptable in English, actually. Mm -hmm. Canada's bilingual. <laughs> it's like half British English, half American English. Yeah. I spell color with a U. <laughs> I don't, actually. And they're Get both out. just fine. <laughs> Get me. Out. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. But you have to code without a U. I'll be running out of here and everyone's broke out the torch and pitch for you. Okay. No. <laughs> intervention, force feed a maple syrup and poutine. <laughs> <laughs> Why does that sound strangely amusing? <laughs> Anyways, um, uh, I do a lot. Of, I, I, I do traditional work, I do digital work. Um, I've done a bit of sculpting work. Uh, way <laughs> what kind of uh, sculpting material? Amusingly enough, baking shortening. What? That sounds amusing! I did a, uh, it was actually my last year of high school, one of the projects we were allowed to do was a lard sculpture. It was a baking lard sculpture. Um, I, it's, it, it's a very interesting Did you say lard? lard? Yeah. It was, like I said, it was a, it was a block of baking shortening. And. Oh, uh, I see. It was, uh, like, it, it's an interesting material to work with because at room temperature, like you know, most shortening and stuff at room temperature will kind of like dissolve and like yeah. puddle. Um, this stuff is still semi-solid at room temperature, but it's malleable enough to work with it, so you can actually sculpt with it. It's an interesting material to work with. Um, mm -hmm. I ended up uh, taking this into a competition out in, uh, in Saskatchewan, okay. last year, obviously. Um, and got to see a number of different people. So you'd be surprised at what people do with, with sculpting and stuff. Um, yeah. I remember one of the exhibits that was there that I think actually won in the provincial competition was this chocolate sculpture. And it was three Canadian geese, like full flight everything. It was just absolutely gorgeous. But this guy was, the guy who did this was like a sculptor for like 40 years. Like he's been doing this for a while. But yeah, amazing, amazing work. Um, yeah, so uh, I, I did a little sculpture like that. Um, I don't know. There's a, I, I tend to dabble with pretty much anything that I can get my hands on. <laughs> so I'm a Minecraft builder. <laughs> <laughs> that is a medium. Yes. Uh, you show a lot of versatility in, uh, in different mediums uh, just by uh, participating in the iron artist competitions at these uh, these mm -hmm. Canadian furry cons. You've uh, you know. Or some of those different ones you've uh, worked with. Yeah. Um, cornstarch, wax blocks. Yeah, we did the yeah. little cornstarch pellets. Uh, we did the, the wax blocks that we carved from. Um, at FE, we were working with those like those beads. Yeah. I don't remember what they're called, but the ones that you put on the grid. Perler. Oh. Perler beads, yeah, that's it. That yeah. you can melt together? Yeah, the, the, problem, the problem with the, this was we had the beads in these assorted containers but we didn't have the grid to mount them on. So they were all loose, even as we were working on them. So, that was fun. Uh, <laughs> if you could select a medium for art artist, what would you select? Why? Mario Paint. Yes. It was, it was actually a suggestion that my, that my roommate here Is that a physical required. paint? It's not a physical paint. It was actually a program that the Super Nintendo, a while back, like way back when, and hello, come in, sit down. <laughs> Get around. I was like, I'm going on. I was just curious what's going on here. Well, this is me, the GOH, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. Yes, it is. It's a question. It's a way. Well, yeah. I'm going to no. go to the other, uh, the other story. Okay. Okay. Hey there. Hi. But, um. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, no, Mario Paint is, uh, it was this game that was on the, on the Super Nintendo you know, eons ago, um, where you, it was much like you know your typical MS Paint program, mm -hmm. yeah, kind of like the stamp thing, and a couple of games in it, and 
you could do little like short animations and things like that. It was, it was just a fun little program to mess around with. Mm -hmm. It also had, it even had a music uh, program. Yeah, you could make music in this thing. It was, oh wow! It was hilarious. Yeah, which and they still do. Yeah, there there have been like drums of this game now, and people have done like full symphonies and shit. Oh yeah, in, in I think I've seen some. Yeah, yeah, you can look it up on uh, YouTube. So yeah. quite a few. Uh, there is quite a few good recordings of people have made of the music in Mario Paint, mm -hmm. of original and uh, and uh, compositions. Yeah. Yeah. And since I've, I myself have actually dabbled in like MS Paint, it's like a lot of my yeah. early pictures. Of, if you go back on Transfer and, and look at a lot of my early works. Some of them were actually done in MS Paint with a mouse that had like the, the, the port that you actually screwed into the back of the computer. Oh, yeah. I think oh, you just made dark yourself. Ages. Sorry? I think you just made it yourself. <laughs> yeah, I've, like been, 15, I've been doing this for. A, I've been doing this for a long time. Um, I've been drawing at least on the computer digitally for at least 10, 12 years. That's 2015. I've been using tablets since 98. Yeah, I didn't really have access to the materials at the time, unfortunately. I suppose I It was, you know, it wasn't a, until much later in, in my career. Like I was, like I said, I was drawing with the MSP and mouse and stuff, like right. And I think it was about three or four years in, my uh, my friends all bought me this Wacom tablet, which was I think the Intuos 2 at the time. That was my first tablet. And, you know, being myself, I, the first thing I'm like, no, this is too expensive, you shouldn't have done this, you shouldn't have done this. And they said, you know, you're going to take this and we're going to bolt it to your desk. And they would have. So um, I ended up using that. I, I, I used it until I carved a groove in the thing. Uh, I literally, like, there's... You didn't know about changing the 